Hi, welcome to ADR Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're going to do a small setup of a Firmax 1455 meat panel to the Firmax 14701 video panel. With the handset powered up and cycled, you come to the, the welcome screen. Here you can see some icons that you need to click on. On the bottom right there, you can see the, the settings cog. If we were to click on that, then let's click on installer. I'll take us to the installer menu. Type in the pin, 6666, then press tick. And that will then bring us to the um, installer menu. Let's click on monitor. And in this menu, we can change some settings. The main setting we need to change is its IP address. We need it on the same range as the door station. So at the bottom there, network settings, we can see its address is 10.1.1.1. We need to bring that into the range that suits our network. Uh, further up there, we can see the block and the apartment number, block one, apartment 0101. First thing, let's change its IP address to 10.1.0.2. Simply touch the touch screen, the information box comes up, type in the new IP address that you need. Once that's done, press tick and that's it saved. As we were talking about before, block numbers, the block number is 1, the apartment is 0101. So let's change that again using the touch screen keypad, change that to 0001. When you're finished, press tick and then press OK. If all's well, you'll see at the top there, settings saved. Now the handset's set up, we need to browse into it. We know its IP address, 10.1.0.2. That's what we've just changed it to. And then after that, we're going to browse into the door station, which is a factory set, 10.1.0.1. Okay, so let's log in. Let's log into the handset first of all. Uh, it's dot two, if I remember rightly, so two. Ask you for the login, and if you remember, login would be admin, and the password, 6666. That logs us into the, uh, the handset menu. So here you can see the device, it's just its basic information, confirms its MAC address, its IP address, uh, the firmware version if you ever need that. What we really, in the basic install, what we really need to look at is general. How's the thing behaving? So, first question, the first field is block. Which block is this? If it's just a one-to-one, -one, one door station or two door stations calling a series of flats, it would be block one. What is the apartment number of this phone? If it was the first phone in the building, it would be one. Maybe it's flat two, though. So all you can you can change that in this window, and all you simply do is if you remember it's a four-digit number. So all you would do is change this to flat two, so it'd be zero 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 two. Press return, and that's made it flat two now. The uh, the monitor number leave that at zero for the time being. Sync number that's the password for the handset. When this came originally the that sync code is 123456, um, but subsequently I've changed it to the actual password of the, the handset, which is 6666. You can change that further down the line. Now, I've changed that, um, press save, but it says input error. You'll have to take my word for this, or, or maybe I'll, I'll throw a video up and put it as a subscreen. But if I press 2 and then call, You can hear the door stations ringing and also the handsets ringing. And then I press A. A cancels the call. So if I go to this again and change this to 0001, for instance, press return and then save. It still comes up as an input error. However, if I press 2 now again, there's no one there. If you press 1, and then call. 
you can hear you just have to take my word for it but you can hear that we have changed um, the address of the phone so that's the the general information next is network information if this is just going to a local um, switch network, you're putting your own bunch of switches in and keeping it within like a VPN in effect, um, you you wouldn't you could leave it on the 10 range or the 172 or uh, 192. You could leave it on 10. That'd be absolutely fine. Uh, the if you're going to be using it with um, SIP protocol, you might need to change it to suit the subnet of your SIP server. And if you're leaving to to use an app. Again, you might need to consider what is the gateway address of the um, SIP server, normally 192. But in this case, because we, our example is one door to a set of phones, we can just leave it as 10. IP camera, self-explanatory, we're not adding IP cameras just yet. SIP protocol, uh, SIP protocol is another is VOIP, a more advanced version that goes through a, a, a switch interface. Um, it, what will be the address of the SIP server? We're not doing that in this instance. Advanced, again, nothing really to worry about. DTMF unlock. On the Firmax phone, you've got an icon of a key. On most IP phones, you've got an icon of a key, which you press to unlock the phone. That's actually a speed dial. On most systems, it's 0, 0. On some systems, it's 6, 6. I assume this is for when we're in a third-party handset later on. The, the DTMF code to unlock the door, you'd enable that and then type in the code followed by the hash symbol. But we're not, well, again, we're not covering that just yet. Actuators, that's the uh, translation between Spanish and English, obviously Firmax being Spanish. Actuators, relays. Um, what relays are we using, if any? If we're using lift control, we might need to use these. If we're using um, vehicle control, so you've got an example where you've got a pedestrian gate next to a vehicle gate, and this thing comes in the middle. You can decide, uh, if you put a relay module in, which relays will release. Maybe there's a secondary door that you want to release, or maybe you've got a client where they've got access control on their own front door, and you want to release it from the handset. Yeah, that's what you use these for. A verification, is it registered on the SIP server? PIN code, 6666, if you want to change that, which I would recommend you do, you can do that here. And restore, well, it's self-explanatory. If you want to restore it back to factory settings, maybe something's going to skew, do so. If you just want to, before you do that, before you have to reprogram it, reboot it, and make sure everything um, behaves as it should. So once we've done that, it's uh, more or less finished with the handset. We don't need to do much else on the basic installation, and we can log out. Next, we're going to go to the panel itself. Admin, 123456. There's the IP address, the default IP address of the, um, of the door station. And we'll sign in. Again, you're met with much a similar menu as before. Device gives you all the information of the device. General, how are we going to program this to, to operate? So general, um, the general setup is, this is going to be one door station calling multiple handsets. So it's a block of um, installation. It's a block panel going on the block of flats or apartment. If it was a GE, general entrance panel, maybe you have several panels and block one is block one or block A, block two is block B or block two. So because it's just one one panel, it's block one. And because it's one door station, it's just device one. The interface language on the panel that the end user, the visitor would see is in English. I've changed this volume, it's factory set at four, but because I'm sat right next to it, I'm doing this video, I've, I've turned it down to one because it is a bit loud, but which is good. Um, and voice synthesizer. So when the um, the lock is released, you'll hear it say the door's unlocked. Further down here, you can see the time and date field. Again, as I say in all my videos, good practice. Change your time and date now, um, and it will appear on the panel when you change it. Next would be network. This is where you would change the IP of the device, IP address of the device. Once you've made any changes, press save. Then we come to the access tab. Um, it is actually set for three seconds, this thing. 
which I don't think is long enough. So change, I changed that to five. Dot open delay. So if you've got a situation, for instance, where you've got the door station and it's a little distance away from the door, that five second lock release time might be too short. So still give them five seconds to get to open the door, but maybe put a little delay in there. So when you press the lock release button on your foot on the handset, it doesn't release the door straight away. It could put a little delay, maybe a two second delay after you press the button, then the door will time that for five seconds. So that's useful on places where you've got um, automatic gates, for instance. Um, people might sometimes they take off the seat belt and lean through the window or open the door to use the intercom. It might be the, the instance where you don't want them to open straight away. You want people to be able to get to the, the door in time. Um, Force door alarm. If you use the dry contact inputs, the door contact inputs, you can um, raise an alarm if the door's left open or forced. If you're using auxiliary re relays, which we're not, you would look at these um, timings here. Admin card. The um, the device itself, the panel itself, has a built-in MiFi reader, and it can work in a standalone fashion. So if you put in six zeros in this field here and then press save, what that means is the first MiFi card that's presented to the reader becomes an admin card becomes a MasterCard, and you can use that to add further cards down the line. So it's useful if you're you, you, you're not managing the site, the end user is going to manage the site. It's useful for them. They if they want to add more users, they can simply use a MasterCard to add more users. If on the other hand you're going to be using access control on other doors on the site, and you want the built-in MyFi reader to be part of that other system, maybe um, Paxton on the Net2 system, maybe ACT on the ActWin system, um, TDSI on the XGuard, WinPack, or whatever, any, any of these systems we do, you can interface it using the um, the Wigand interface, using the 26-bit Wigand output. Um, next one down is the facility code. If you're using 26-bit Wigand, sometimes you, you put in a site code, the facility code. Um, so that covers the this this field here. Next would be access pin. So that's if you are going to use the onboard keypad as an access control keypad. So again, small installation. You can, can give them cards to get in, or if you want to, you can give them a pin. You can give the residents a pin to let themselves in. So in this case, if we generate a code, maybe zero eight five two. So they go up the middle of the keypad. That's the new code to get in, press save, and now the access pin to open the door would be 0852. And on the keypad, on the, the panel, you would press the right arrow, type in the code, press B, and it would um, unlock the door. Next, facial recognition. If you want to enable facial rec, press tick. You can do the admin of facial recognition on the panel or in the software in this um, interface here. If you want to do rec facial recognition, you need to get uh, another license and a, a bit of interface, a uh, dongle interface to enable that in the Firmax Meet software. Um, and, that, and that allows you to use the um, the camera on the door station as a facial recognition camera to, to allow people access. IP camera, if you want a second, third or fourth camera on the site, overlooking the door, lobby areas, car parking areas, places like that. If you want to make make sure people are in or make sure people find a good parking space, you can add extra cameras and simply enable give the description IP camera maybe front door. It's URL, it's um our RTSP stream address, type that in there. And for each camera you add, press save. Sip if we're going to be adding this to a SIP phone system, we can do that. It's fairly simple to do. It's usual information. You get this information from your client, actually, uh, whether it's cloud or whether it's hardware driven. Putting the information there, press save. Um, nothing really special there. SIP trunk, enable trunk call so it can receive calls. SIP call, if you're going to be adding an app, this is how you would manage the app. 
um, you would you would export the um, CSV file and add users according to their SIP address for their for their handsets and also the um, app address, which we'll cover in something else later on. Advanced, uh, this is just the um, on the display of the keypad of the panel. Do you want to advance features? Pin code, we already know the pin code is 123456. That's the code to get into the panel and do admin. Um, so if you want to change that, do that here. QR access, we'll, we'll come to that in another, another video. And reset. Reset the panel if you want to. If it's um, behaving badly or you want to just check everything's um, programmed in properly. Okay, so that's the, the panel set up. We've configured the, the time, the date, its um, IP address. We've configured the panel to um, call a handset on extension one or extension two, showing a couple of examples, all the way up to 999. We've typed in, uh, we programmed in a code and we're ready to go. It, so this, this just covers a basic installation. And if, as you can see on the drawing here, the um, this is a typical outlay of how the system would look. You have your um, panel, which is PoE powered. You have a PoE switch, a generic one. I'm using the, the W box. And then you have a handset. The handset, again, PoE powered. And with the W box switch I've got here, four ports are PoE. And then there's four ports, which are standard ports. So much like a, an analog video system where you have four-way video distributors, you'd have four-port switches instead, four-port PoE switches instead um, in this instance. So for every four handsets, you would have a PoE switch. Of course, you can get bigger switches. We do bigger switches, which are PoE. You can have up to 48 ports from us on, um, on the PoE. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.